Hello, everybody, um, and welcome to day two of Change Now Summit, the world's largest gathering for the planet. Uh, my name is Anna. I am your host for this session, and I'm very happy to be here with you uh, today and to be part of this event, which for the first time is happening online, which gives us the amazing opportunity to, opportunity to have so many um, amazing people from all over the world join us and help us shape what collective action means when we talk about uh, planet and the climate. Uh, today's speech session uh, has the topic of hydrogen and is co-created together with our partners at uh, Solar Impulse, whose network has an amazing range of, of solutions on this topic. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, Welcome, and um, I, have, I can let you know that during this session, uh, we will have five startups introducing their solutions on the topic of uh, hydrogen. And uh, at the end, we will have a Q&A session um, with the members of our jury in which they will be able to ask uh, questions and to give some um, thoughts on the solutions that they have, uh, that they have heard. Um, but I would like to uh, quickly start introducing the, some of the people that will be uh, part uh, of this session today and they will be close to us. And the first uh, person and the first expert that I would like to introduce is Pierre Mori from uh, Solar Impulse, which uh, will quickly give us an intro and a little bit of a deep dive into the topic of hydrogen itself so that we can understand better uh, the solutions that we will uh, hear uh, in the next uh, uh, half an hour. Uh, Pierre, are you with us? Hi Anna, Hi all. thank you very much uh, for the introduction. So I'm Pierre Mori and I'm working at the Solar Impulse Foundation in the startups uh, acquisition team. So basically, we are a nonprofit organization based in uh, Switzerland, and uh, our goal is to accelerate the adoption of clean technologies. So what we do is that we are looking for innovative solutions all over the world in uh, all industries that can have a positive impact on the environment, but also that are profitable. Uh, we label the solutions according to three main criteria. So the profitability, the environmental impact, and the maturity of the solution. And when the company is labeled, what we do is that we, that we help them grow by connecting them with potential uh, customers, corporates, uh, partners, investors, public sector as well. We are in partnership with cities, countries, regions. And uh, we just announced yesterday the launch of uh, two venture funds also to um, invest money in those projects. So today and yesterday as well, we are here to present some of our companies. Today is about hydrogen. We have uh, four projects um, related to production, transportation and uh, use of hydrogen in different use cases. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Pierre, for, for providing this uh, overview and for helping us understand a little bit better where uh, today's session is coming from. Um, and for the next slot, I would like to also introduce uh, the members of our jury. Uh, I'm going to call uh, you one by one and I'm going to ask you to uh, quickly also introduce yourselves um, and uh, your connection to today's topic. Uh, first member of the jury uh, that we have here with us today is Jan Mertens uh, from Engie. Hello, Jan. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for having me here. So my name is Jan Mertens. I'm the Chief Science Officer at, uh, at Engie uh, within the, the research department. And so within the scientific department, um, we look into um, new emerging technologies and we partner up with academics, universities around the world to, um, to work on these uh, emerging, uh, emerging energy topics. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, and next we have uh, Paolo Wiff from Air Liquid. Hey, Paul, Paolo. Sorry. Thank you, everyone. I am Paolo Wiff from Air Liquid. I'm established here in Tokyo. I'm in charge of the uh, electrolysis and decarbonization efforts at the Innovation Campus Tokyo. So today, let's have our best initiative on that. Thank you. Perfect. And uh, 
uh, greetings to Tokyo, so all all the way on the other side of the world. <laughs> Arigato. Um, um, and uh, last but not least, um, the the third member of our jury today is Marianne Julien, also from Air Liquid. Hey, Marianne. Yeah. yeah hello. Thank you. I'm working on the Paris Innovation Campus um, for Air Liquid, and I'm a catalyst of change. So Air Liquid has been involved in, in hydrogen energy for 20 years, and I. I was first involved with technology developments, and now I'm more on the soft issues, you know, to make things happen. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Um, and we can now move into uh, hearing the solutions themselves. So um, I, we will have uh, three minutes uh, per each uh, um, pitch. And uh, I will also call, uh, call the startups one by one. Uh, the first uh, startup and the first solution that we are starting with uh, today is High Syllabs. Uh, and we have Belen Moreno um, presenting the idea to us today. Uh, Belen, you have uh, three minutes to, ex to share with us your idea. Great. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Belen Moreno. I'm Sales and Marketing Coordinator at Hysilabs, so I will introduce you our solution. Uh, Hysilabs is a deep tech startup uh, whose purpose is bringing new technology for hydrogen transportation and storage. Uh, so uh, hydrogen is a key element on the energy transportation uh, transition, as we all know. But of course, uh, there are some aspects that need to be solved. Uh, uh, um, to enable its deployment. First, we don't have 100% green waste of production, and second, uh, we don't, uh, transportation and storage are uh, very linked to different techniques of handling, which are sometimes difficult. That's why HICI Labs uh, has uh, developed the molecule hydrocyl, which is the molecule you are seeing in, uh, on your screens. This is the first liquid non-organic hydrogen carrier. That means that it's actually liquid and stable at ambient uh, temperature and pressure, so it can actually be transported and stored as a conventional liquid fuel, such as, for example, uh, gasoline. Also, the density of the hydrogen of hydrogen into the carrier is 8.7 percent, which is actually seven times more hydrogen than the same than for the same volume of compressed gas trailers. So, for seven trailers of uh, compressed gas, we will just have one uh, trailer of hydrogen with the same quantity of hydrogen. In it. The uniqueness of, the, of our solution uh, um, uh, uh, tells us that the most adapted business model uh, is a technology transfer via licensing. That means that uh, hydrogen producers will actually be able to create uh, hydrocell, then transport it into the logistics they already have for other fuels, liquid fuels, and release it whenever and wherever they want uh, without uh, any energy input needed at the release because that's also uh, one of our uh, main advantages, that we don't need any energy input for the release. Heisey Labs also understands that its solution is a game changer, and that's why we address the whole transportation and storage um, uh, hydrogen market, especially any project or any uh, uh, goal of uh, green hydrogen in massive quantities with a global and long distance transfer, for example, for bringing uh, hydrogen from one point of the world to another. Now we are completely focused on getting industrial. Uh, that's why we look for partners to build pilots of our solution. And we'll be doing a fundraising at the end of this year, beginning of the next one. Uh, so uh, the whole team of High Sea Labs and also the people who already supported our development know for sure that hydrogen will end up with fossil fuels and that hydrocell is the solution to facilitate the deployment of hydrogen. Thank you very much and do not hesitate to give me any uh, all of your questions. Thank you so much, Belen. Um, what a start to the day. <laughs> um, you're, you're setting up the bar quite high, and uh, I cannot wait to uh, see what the, the members of the jury have to, to ask at the end of the pitching session. So thank you one more time. And you were actually quite on time and 20, minute, 20 seconds before the three minutes, which is not, not easy to pull off. So thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, the second um, the second solution that we will move uh, towards is um, 
called Store H. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Apologies if I'm not. Uh, and we have Michael Levi um, sharing with us today. Yes, Mike Levy. Uh, Mark Levy. Mike Levy. Uh, let me just see how this works because I've got the clicker working. And uh, can somebody share my slide deck? There we go. And just do a quick <laughs> check to see how this works. I see. OK, so it's going to be uh, like that. All right, sorry about this, but I can't seem to see both the, um, the, the, the slides and the clicker at the same time. So could I have somebody on the uh, team do the, the changing of the slides, please? Yes, we can have that. Uh, with the, the what, what I'm asking you is when you uh, need to move to the next slide, just say next slide, please, and my colleagues will change it. Thank you. And uh, uh, Belen set the stage very high because I am now going to take up the morning challenge of compressing a five minute pitch into a three minute pitch. So bravo, Belen. Let me see if I can do this. Anna, tell me when I can start. Right now. The time is uh, clicking, um, okay. going. I'm Mike Levy, Vice President R&D and a shareholder of Accus. I'm happy to present our second round of financing for storage technologies, which is our hydrogen spin-off. It's been incubated by Accus with 16 million euros of seed funding through year end 2019. We supplemented it with 10 million euros Series A funding in 2020. We're now looking for 10 million in Series B this year and 22 million in Series C next year. Next slide, please. Storage Technologies commercializes an all-in-one energy and urban mobility service offer to subscribers that includes clean energy through the use of green hydrogen stored safely and extremely low pressures in our solid state cartridges, access to the storage cartridge distribution network as well as home chargers, a leased vehicle that's chosen from a complete catalog of powered by storage urban vehicles, insurance and maintenance. Next slide, please. We target urban mobility because this is a significant contributor to global warming, creating about 15% of total greenhouse gases, and it's becoming more and more of an issue as our planet moves towards greater than 50% urbanization. Now, battery electric solutions are providing an inadequate transition solution. Our vision is to make our world cleaner and greener by allowing green hydrogen to solve those problems that are inherent in battery electric urban mobility. Next slide, please. Our storage all-in-one offer is enabled by three components. First of all, our proprietary patented and unique solid-state storage cartridge that is plug-and-play, safe and easy to use, and protected by over 155 patents worldwide. Next slide, please. Second of all, our unique vending machines that allow subscribers to exchange an empty cartridge for a full one. These distributors are CapEx light, scalable, and easy to display, to deploy, and this range is completed by home chargers that allow users to charge at home or in the office. Next slide, please. Lastly, our proprietary powered by storage powertrain module that consists of our customized fuel cells coupled to hydrogen cartridges. The module is easy to integrate into a vehicle and it's designed to allow vehicle OEMs to migrate from their existing battery electric solutions. To date, we have 12 OEMs worldwide that have adopted the storage standard. Next slide, please. One strong user trend in mobility as a whole, especially in urban mobility, is the move away from direct ownership. Our all-in-one offer focuses on providing our subscribers stress-free mobility through leasing of vehicles and energy as a service. Next slide, please. And with their subscription, our B2G, B2B, and B2C users can choose a vehicle from our Powered by Storage catalog. Next slide, please. Our Series E has, developed, has allowed us to put in place a dedicated team with a CEO that has 30 years of experience in the automotive industry. He comes from Renault. Our COO comes from Air Liquide, so he has 10 years of experience in the hydrogen industry. And our head of sales has 10 years of experience in the high-tech industry. Next slide, please. We've put in place a focused go-to-market strategy. City by city, we're deploying. Next slide. Our uh, Michael? I'm going to invite you to, to wrap it up in we maybe one or two sentences. Right now yes. on this slide here, can you please just leave the business plan up? Slide. Leave that one up. So in our 2025 timeframe, what we see here is a, uh, an ecosystem 
with a global footprint in Europe, Asia, and North Africa of over 200,000 powered by storage vehicles. Next slide. This is not the first time we've scaled up innovations. Today, there are over 30 million passenger cars worldwide with one or more of Acuse's innovations. Our Series A investors are in discussions to take all of our Series B. If this happens, we may launch our Series C this year. Thank you for your interest, and I'm open for questions. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. <laughs> um, and uh, sorry to have to cut you short. Um, I feel uh, we're doing here a little bit of uh, speed dating um, on uh, <laughs> business ideas. So we really have a, a short time, but thank you for, uh, uh, for taking us uh, through your ideas and through the amazing work that you and your team uh, are doing. Uh, and we can now move uh, to the next um, idea who is going to be presented by Christopher Brandon. And Christopher is going to talk to us about scalable uh, fuel cells. Christopher, are you with us? Okay, so Christopher just joined. Let's see if he can... I'm back. Hey, Christopher. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and you might have to help me on the slides as well. I don't think they're popping up on this side. Okay. Um, my, my colleagues are taking care of uh, it right now. Uh, they, will, they should pop up uh, in a few seconds. So thank you, Solar Impulse, for the continued support and all the great work you guys do. We love it. Uh, I also changed now. We were there a year ago at the Grand Palais. And I got to say, it's one of the nicest places to catch up with all these great innovative ideas. So look forward to being in, in situ next year. So next slide. So it's all of the big buzz about hydrogen. But really, if this is all going to materialize the way solar did in the early 2000s and lithium did about 10 years ago, there's two main challenges we see within the fuel cell sector that need to be overcome. That of cost and complexity. And that is what we've set out to resolve. Next slide. So we have redesigned at a microstructure level what happens within our PEM fuel cell stacks. Pretty much everything bar the catalyst has been redesigned, meaning a much more compact and lightweight and efficient stack with a simplified balancer plant, much smaller system. But this is also designed for manufacturing whereby the current process is too uh, arduous, involves too many different partners, is too expensive. With us, there's a straight through process which we've been working with a Swiss industrial partner for the last three years. We can produce a stack in literally a matter of minutes and the cost, get the cost down at scale to below 100 euros a kilowatt from nearly 1,000 currently. And finally, our stacks are optimally designed for mobile applications as they have been minimally affected by the effective gravity. Next slide. Doing a little deeper dive into the, into the tech, we see that we have a power density of one and a half to two times that of market leading competitors. And we're able to operate our stacks at much lower pressures, which means we can simplify the balance of plant, makes it cheaper um, and simplified. And the stacks also range all the way up to 250 kilowatts. Next slide. We're focused very much on mobility, areas which need range, payload, extensive use, buses, trucks, as well as the niche markets of, of forklifts and going all the way through to aviation. Next slide. We're currently at TRL 6.7 with our stacks have been deployed in a wide range of applications, range extenders on, on mobile applications. Next slide. As well as much larger stationary applications, our first 250 kilowatt system being delivered later this year building block for maritime, heavy goods, and all those type of applications. Next slide. We have a team of about a dozen now. Growing quickly, we should be 20 or 25 by the end of the year. Next slide. With a background in fuel cell, fuel cell systems, and the rest. But we're looking for partnerships on deployment, on, on production, and also investment partners that see the long-term vision and role for hydrogen and fuel cells in decarbonizing our future because time is running out and we need to press on now. Thank you very much. 
Thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, and I'm happy we had the gods of teams with us today and you were able you were able to join just on time for the presentation to 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 get back to the session just on time for the presentation um and uh, i'm also um curious to see uh, the kind of questions that your presentation will uh, will spark uh in the in the members of the jury so we can now move to the last presentation of this uh, session um, we have with us today Matt Candy from Stimology Motion to present their solution. Matt, are you with us? Hello, yeah. Great. Hey, Matt. Thank you. Uh, so, so, hello, my name is Matt Candy, and I'd like to introduce you to Steamology. The global diesel engine market was worth $207 billion in 2020, and in order to reach net zero targets, diesel engines require replacement. Steamology have the solution for zero emission diesel engine replacement. At the heart of our technology is the combustion of hydrogen and oxygen, creating clean green steam. There's no carbon, no NOx, no SOx, and no particulates. Renewable energy is plentiful but intermittent. 10,000 times more solar energy strikes the earth every day than we use, and it's free. Renewable energy can be used to power electrolysis. Electrolysis creates hydrogen and oxygen gas. Gas is collected, compressed, and stored in tanks. And these gas tanks are the energy storage. They're the battery of our system. When the sun has gone down or the wind stops blowing, energy is demanded, gas is combusted in our steam generators, and steam delivers power. Water is produced that can be returned for electrolysis. Steamology power solutions are at advanced technology readiness level of six to seven. Drive trains are scalable and modular to the megawatt scale. Compared to hydrogen fuel cells and battery alternatives, we have three distinct advantages. Much more energy dense, much more cost effective, with a much longer life. Steamology turbines can provide a drop-in mechanical replacement for diesel drivetrains, and Steamology can also provide electrical drive. We adopt a cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach, avoiding rare or toxic materials. Our Dream Steam team broke the world land speed record for a steam powered car. And recently we took this new approach for zero emission power. Steamology have been awarded over one and a half million pounds in grants in the last two years, raised EIS seed investment and a number of awards. We have approved and filed patents. We're in discussion with major rail undertakings, negotiating the challenge of replacing diesel engines in new and existing rolling stock with service life far beyond the legislated removal of diesel. Markets for road and rail in the UK are extensive and with 10% of the addressable market, that's 55 million in the UK, building to 10 billion in North American trucking and shipping as our next global market. Steamology is transitioning from private and grant funded projects towards sales and licensing revenue, embracing sales and growth in the UK and then global markets. We wish to raise two million to fund the next 24 months, providing for strategic recruitment, rail network technology demonstrators before commercial rollout. The most likely exit is a trade sale to one of the many global diesel engine manufacturers. An example of this hydrocarbon industry diversification is Cummins' recent purchase of hydrogenic fuel cells for $290 million. Thank you for listening. My name is Matt Candy, and please let me know if you've got any questions. Together, we'll make green power make a difference. Thank you, Matt. What a nice call to action to end this uh, pitch session. Uh, <laughs> but I, I couldn't have said it better. Um, so thank you all for uh, sharing your solutions and the amazing work that you're putting and helping drive uh, this direction forward. And let's then take um, a couple of minutes um, to see whether Jan, Paolo, Marianne, uh, the members of our jury, have any thoughts, any questions um, 
for any of the of the solutions or of the projects that they have heard. Anybody who would uh, like to to ask or to share something, please just uh, just um, ask away or start talking. Okay, maybe I'll, I will start with a question to to Belen from IT Labs, if, if that's okay. I was wondering about the stability of your molecule. How many times can it be charged and and discharged? Is it stable forever, or can you use it five times? Or you have any idea on that? Okay, so actually, our molecule is stable forever. It it actually has uh, increased life cycles. That means that we actually we are going to always. Uh, we are going to start from silica that we are going to charge in hydrogen and then once we are going to release this hydrogen with no energy input we can recover this silica and recharge it and uh, this can do it uh, can, can be done infinite times because every time we redo the the process is like bringing a new molecule into the world so uh, basically it's uh, infinite okay never degrades thank you i have a question for Belen as well um, the cinetics of uh, producing this compound and then releasing hydrogen, can you say a little bit about this? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the production part? yeah, yeah. Uh, for the charging process, the cinetics is not really relevant because uh, the, the, uh, that would be done uh, in the same time as hydrogen. So it will take us more or less the same time as production, uh, hydrogen production for the release, which is more important for, for example, when we are when we have hydrogen on board uh, from hydrosil, uh, it's a few seconds. That means that in a few seconds we are going to have the reaction, and it will depend on the uh, on the quantity of hydrogen we want to be released. But it's uh, a few seconds. So it's very comparable to a liquid storage or a gas storage. Okay, yeah. thank you. I have a question for Matt. You said that uh, Redway um, are, are interested, but they have yes. the choice between uh, Oops, I'm trying again. Huh? Hello, yes. Yeah. So you have the choice, you're competing with a solution where the hydrogen is embarked on board and uh, instead of embarking the water. So I'm just would like to listen to this. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes. For to to run uh, red, train trains with hydrogen, there are yes. two, two ways of doing it. Either you embark hydrogen on board yes. and, and you, you put it into a fuel cell, or you we use your system which runs with water and the hydrogen is produced on board, if I understand yes. right. So <laughs> What are the pro and cons of the two solutions? Understood. So we uh, don't manufacture the fuel on, on board. So you use electrolysis um, to create the hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and you store that the gas in tanks on the vehicle. The advantages of our system are that the engine is very small. So for high power applications from 300, 250, 300 kilowatts up to a megawatt, the engine is very small. It leaves you more space for fuel. We have much less balance of plant. Uh, and as the power output grows, the engine doesn't grow linearly. So uh, the, we had a freight train company to visit our site yesterday. So as you get towards the megawatt scale, uh, you have more room for gas storage, which gives you more range. Uh, and we can also work in buy mode. Uh, and we also work uh, well uh, in a wide range of temperatures. Uh, fuel cells uh, can suffer with cooling in the very hot temperatures and batteries suffer uh, with uh, lower performance in very cold temperatures. And we work well across a, a, a range of ambient conditions. Thank um, you. And uh, we're starting in rail, but trucks and ships for diesel engine replacement. I have a, one question also for Matt. It's about the compression uh, stage that you have between the electrolysis and the utilization of uh, uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Did you get the energy from the compression directly from the electrolysis no. stage? No. From, from so, where it's uh, coming from? 
So we have several uh, things. We don't need high purity fuels. Uh, we don't need five nines gases because we're combusting it. The energy comes from the combustion of hydrogen and oxygen, which, as you know, is very uh, hot, 2,500 degrees. Uh, we avoid any NOx because we're combusting the hydrogen and oxygen in our steam generator and we surround that with water. So we bring the temperature and the pressure down. We typically operate at 40 bar, 400 degrees C. So we use all standard materials, no ceramics and such like. So it's fully recyclable. We have a cradle to cradle ambition and there are no moving parts. So you've got a very reliable and very fast acting steam generator. So you have a high torque response on the turbine. Okay, thank you. You can come, you come, and, come and see a demonstration. <laughs> I would like to go, but I cannot now. <laughs> I've got a question for uh, or H, if that's okay. For, uh, yes, sure. Yes, yes. I was wondering whether you could elaborate a little bit on the advantages of, of your hydrogen solution with respect to the um, electrical um, alternative, eh? also the battery, because, of course, you have an electrolysis stage and you have a fuel cell stage, so the, the electricity, the efficiency would be less than than 30%, um, I guess. So so where do you see your advantages with respect to the battery alternative? The advantages are in terms of the usage case. Uh, today, users uh, have to uh, wait a significant amount of time to recharge the batteries. Second of all, the recharging of the batteries has to be done either at home, which means that they have to take uh, heavy batteries up into their houses, or it has to be done in uh, recharging infrastructure that as cities have put in higher capex than our solution. Uh, what you, you are absolutely right, however, that, and this is the main issue of hydrogen, if you look at hydrogen um, uh, as a, in terms of overall energy efficiency, it's clear that uh, whenever you change energy from one uh, form to another, you're going to be losing uh, efficiency. So. Uh, the remark that you're making is a remark that's applicable to any kind of hydrogen solution. The answer that we always give, as well as other uh, people, is that we're looking at uh, renewable energy, renewable electricity that's used to uh, manufacture the hydrogen. So then that means that in any event, this electricity would have been lost uh, if it had not been used to, to make the hydrogen. I don't know if that answers your, your question. So, so do you understand that you will be a lot lighter as well? Your pack will be lighter than the battery pack? Yes. Today we have um, uh, cartridges. If you're comparing just movable parts, uh, and if you want to do a real apples-to-apples -apples comparison, you should compare our approach to, for instance, if you're based in Paris, you see uh, Z-Way that has just launched a uh, battery swap uh, electric scooter approach, which is modeled on what Gogoro did in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, what we have done is we have looked at uh, the user case, our user case compared to the Z-Way case, and we are more favorable economically and in terms of weight for the, uh, uh, for, uh, the users. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for all the questions. No. I, I love the energy that is coming from it. I would invite um, one more question. Yeah, one last question. Uh, for whoever has one, and then uh, we can uh, continue these conversations in the uh, networking room, which my colleagues shared in the in the chat. So, if there is anybody else who would like to share one last quick question, uh, we can give it one more minute. I was interested to know, in the case of uh, Mike. Uh, how, how, how to do with the cartridge after the cartridge finished with the uh, life uh, expectancy? It's possible to recycle the cartridge? Uh, if, how difficult it is? Yes. Uh, one of the advantages uh, of uh, storage technologies is that we all come from the automotive industry. And in the automotive industry, uh, we always design in recyclability, maintenance, so yes, the cartridges as well as all of the components of the, uh, the vehicles are completely recyclable. Uh, second point is if you look at just end of life uh, for the cartridge, the cartridge today can be used 5,000 cycles compared to typical lithium ion batteries, which are 500 recharges. So you have the advantage of 10 times longer life. And then you have the ad other advantages which is that we've built in recycling. OK, thank you. Great, great session of questions. Um, and um, 
again, thank you all for, for being us here uh, today, uh, sharing your thoughts, sharing your energy and giving us all your attention. Um, I invite you all to continue these conversations in the, uh, in the, at the link that my colleagues have shared. And of course, we expect, expect you for any other session that will happen uh, throughout this day. Thank you all and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.